At least a couple sane Democrats are desperately trying to make sure our country doesn't collapse entirely. So when Rashida Tlaib came out on more than one occasion saying, we're preparing to arrest White House, White House officials who defy our subpoenas, we get, I believe, uh, uh, who, who do we have here? This is um, Steny Hoyer saying, no, 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 stop, stop, calm down. Nobody's arresting anybody, please, enough. Top Democrat rebuffs Rashida Tlaib's claim that Democrats may arrest Trump officials, saying, no, please, that's not going to happen. This is, you know what, man, you know what you get when you elect far left activists who care not for this country and are seeking some kind of foreign policy change by manipulating the U.S. government? You get crazy people who are like, arrest them. Ah! And then the actual politicians who are trying to lead this country are like, stop, please. You're making it worse. But Rashida Tlaib doesn't care. You think she cares about this country? I certainly do not. And I really do mean that. I do not think she cares. I think she cares more about foreign policy. The extent to which she cares about this country is to stop it from doing things that impact the countries she actually cares about. House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer clarified on Wednesday that Democrats are not planning on arresting the members of President Donald Trump's administration who do not comply with congressional subpoenas, disproving a claim that freshman rep Rashida Tlaib had been telling her constituents. No, if Rashida Tlaib is talking to her own staff and people and friends, and they are doing it, Steny Hoyer, how would you know? Okay, here's the thing. If Rashida Tlaib cared about this country, if these other politicians, you know, to just a blanket statement, cared about this country, They'd be talking about how impeachment is going to destroy it and tear it apart. Impeachment is not going to remove Trump. He's not going to be convicted. I mean, sure, fine, roll the dice on it, but it's not going to happen. And if it does, it will create a divide so severe it may never recover. Not only that, impeachment, as aptly put by Andrew Yang, will not solve any of the problems that brought us to Trump in the first place. Trump was elected for a reason by people who like him. Okay, removing him will not change that. It will anger people. And so mistrust, divisiveness, and yes, dare I say it, potential conflict in the streets. Impeachment is a stupid and silly idea and threatening to arrest people who don't who who don't uh, uh, um, comply with your subpoenas when you're also not even voting on impeachment is insane. Yes, they don't care about this country. They care about their own individual power. Quote, We've made a judgment that we want the American people to understand that we are pursuing not arbitrary action, but considered and thoughtful action, Hoyer told reporters, according to the Washington Examiner. And while he noted that imprisoning members of the White House sounds appealing, it is not an action that House Democrats will ultimately carry out. It doesn't mean that Rashida Tlaib and and the squad have never talked about it. I don't mean to say that inherent contempt is by definition arbitrary, but it may be perceived as arbitrary, he continued referring to the oldest of three strategies that Congress can use to enforce subpoenas. Tlaib has boasted about the possibility that her caucus will jail the president's allies in an escalating effort to force White House officials to comply. The move, referred to as inherent contempt, is a power that the legislator has not used since 1935. Let me tell you, this is pretty, and this is the last caucus uh, conversation we had. Do you know this is really unprecedented? This is the worst time we've ever had a situation like this, Tlaib said during a town hall early in October. So they're trying to figure out, no joke, they're trying to figure out, well, is it the DC police that goes in and get them? No, no. Who's they? Who's they? Who's they, who's they trying to figure out anything? What are we hoping? I mean, I'm not in those kind of conversations, but I'm asking like, you know what happens? And they're like, well, Rashida, we're trying to figure it out ourselves because this is uncharted territory. No, I'm telling you that they're trying to be like, well, where are we going to put them? Where are we going to hold them? No, I mean, those are the kind of things they're, they're, they're trying to tread carefully. I don't believe Steny Hoyer. I got to be honest. I think he's playing damage control because he realized her saying this is going to shock and terrify Americans. Accordingly, the House of Representatives voted 23 to 198 in July to hold Attorney General William Barr and Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross in contempt of Congress for defying congressional subpoenas. While it was only the second time in history that a sitting cabinet member was held in criminal contempt, it was not, as Tlaib has asserted, unprecedented. Former President Barack Obama's Attorney General Eric Holder was held in contempt after he refused to turn over documents related to the Operation Fast and Furious gun running scandal. Let me tell you, Mr. Giuliani will be held accountable to Congress as we will hold every other individual, Hoyer added. 
Referring to Trump's personal attorney, we know who he is. Trump responded to Tlaib's repeated suggestion to jail his allies by referring to the Michigan congresswoman as a despicable human being. Tlaib, however, is most well known for her vulgar demands to impeach the president. Only hours after Tlaib was sworn to Congress in January 2018, she was recorded vowing to go after Trump, referring to the, uh, to the president. The freshman Democrat shouted it to a crowd of her supporters that she is going to go in and impeach the mother effer. And there it is. Another reason why impeachment is psychotic and should not be happening, because it was on the agenda before anything ever happened. They, are, they, they have a conclusion and they're searching for an answer. That's the game they're playing. Well, you know what? I'm not surprised Rashida Tlaib is, is off the rails. I mean, you, the far left voted for her and they're mostly nuts. But I will say this to the moderates who voted in moderate Democrats. I don't blame you. I really, really don't because I feel the same way. But at this point, you have to wonder, it's, it's not about what that individual can promise. It's about what they're going to do. And I'll tell you this, when you vote for a moderate Democrat, they're going to they're gonna promise you the right things the things that I would probably agree with and the things I admittedly would probably uh, vote for. The problem is when they then fall in line with the rest of the Democrats and give them this absurd power to do absurd things. And this is where things get dangerous. So for me, I'm out. I'm not going to vote for any of them. I'll vote for, for, I'll, I will vote for Tulsi Gabbard or Andrew Yang because they've explicitly condemned the two. Well, hold on. I should stop there. That's, that's a bit strong because no, they are still on the side of impeachment, which is dangerous, but at least they're saying something. So I'll admit it is an ethical and moral conundrum. Do I want someone like, you know, a, a Yang or a Tulsi? I do. My fear is who will I be handing power to them or the far left lunatics who are talking about arresting people in the White House? The far left lunatics who have been screaming for impeachment before anything had even happened. The far left lunatics who for three years pushed this nonsensical Russiagate crap down our throats. I'm sick of it, man. But you know what? I'm going to throw in a little bit more on top. This wasn't necessarily big enough for me, you know, to do something. You know, maybe this will be part of a bigger story moving forward. But first of all, we got a couple things I got to address. Schiff pressed Volcker to say Ukraine felt pressure from Trump. Yeah, okay. Not only are the Democrats, you know, walking back and uh, back and forth over whether or not they're going to be arresting Trump aides, but apparently, according to uh, uh, the partial testimony, Volker, who was the uh, he was the uh, former ambassador to Ukraine or is the current whatever, uh, former president, uh, a former ambassador, special representative to Ukraine. That's the, that's, the, that's the official position. Tried to pressure him into saying that Trump was pressuring Ukraine. And here's the thing: Republicans aren't being allowed in these meetings. And the Democrats are refusing to hold a vote. So you know what, man? They screech all day and night about how Trump is violating the Constitution. And I'm like, I, I'm, all right, I'm listening. Tell me what's going on. And then I hear this and I'm like, oh, you know what, dude? You, you're all nuts, okay? All of you, every single one. I'm talking about the politicians, please, okay? They just play whatever, you know, you can go back in time and see Jerry Nadler saying the opposite of what he says today. And you can see Mitch McConnell saying the opposite of what he says today. I don't care for these people. I don't care for any one of them. But you know what my problem is? Because of the past eight years, I was sitting here being like, man, that stuff Obama was doing was really bad. And the media was like, you shut your mouth. You shut your mouth. You don't talk about Obama like that. And I'm like, chill, chill. So I made YouTube videos talking about it. Nobody cared. Now you get Donald Trump. And Donald Trump is doing like silly clown like things. OK, like the worst thing he's doing, he sends this letter to Erdogan, which is like, don't be a fool. You know, I don't you know, I'll, I'll, I'll hurt your economy. I'll call you later. And it was like people saw that letter and face palmed. What else did he do? He's going to be hosting the G7 at Trump Doral. And I roll my eyes at that. Oh, you know, here comes Trump. He's, he's, he's picking his own golf resort to host the G7. How can you, you know, talk bad about Biden and act like he's using his name and using his position to benefit his family and then go and do that? I get the argument. The argument is that he can give a discounted rate. He could save money for the government. I don't care, man. He's, he's getting that brand power. He's getting that booking power and he shouldn't have done it. But I'll tell you this. Is that it? OK, I can criticize Trump's foreign policy, but it's still it's not as bad as Obama's foreign policy. So, so Trump is booking a, a, a G7 at his, at, his, at, his, at his golf resort. And I'm like, oh, come on, dude, what are you doing? Is it as bad as the extrajudicial assassinations of Barack Obama? This is the problem I have. I don't like Trump. I do not like Obama. 
I admit Obama was w is way better than any of the Democrats we have now, but it's all the same. The establishment wants the, more, wants the war. They're screeching that Donald Trump is trying to pull troops out of Syria. They never voted for him to be there in the first place. You know what? I, I can't make this a, 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 another political endless rant, but I'll just tell you this. You, you guys know I'm not a big fan of Trump, but I'll tell you what. I'm looking at it and I'm like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things about him culturally that are the worst I've ever seen. Policy-wise, he's actually slightly better than Obama on a lot of areas, particularly foreign policy. He canceled the strike on Iran. I know he called it in the first place, but he, hey, good, pencil heavy racer, stop, don't do that. He's now going to send troops into Saudi Arabia. Really, really don't like it. Yeah, well, Obama bolstered our troops in the Middle East and got us involved in this Syria mess. So I'm not going to blame Trump for that. It was Obama's foreign policy and this ridiculous game. The problem is, what's frustrating to me is the media's duplicit, uh, duplicity, duplicis, what's the word? They're duplicitous. Duplicitousness, that's the word. Deceitfulness. There were clearly people praising Obama. There are clearly people who just want to get Trump. And it is, it is a pointless waste of time. And so that's what, this is what you end up with. You end up with a media that pumps up the insanity, which gets people like Rashida Tlaib elected, and all she cares about is herself. I, that, that's my opinion, okay? You don't agree with that opinion, fine. You don't have to. I got one more segment coming up in a few minutes, and I will see you all shortly.